In this video, we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic equations. And we're going to start this process by looking at some basic equations first. So in part A, we have an equation that says 2 to the x equals 32, and our goal is to solve for x. And one way to do this is to simply get both sides of this equation in terms of 2 to some power. So since the left-hand side is already 2 to some power, I want to think of a way to get 32 to be that as well. And that is the same thing as 2 to the fifth power. So the only thing that we have to look at here is our exponents, because our bases are the same. So I'm going to say that the left-hand side, in order for it to be equivalent for the right, x must also be 5. So that's our solution for part A. In part B, we are given an equation that says ln x minus ln 3 is equal to 0. One thing that we can do here is add ln of 3 to both sides, and we end up with ln of x equals ln of 3. And again, the only thing that's different is this part. So what would x have to be to, be, to make this equation equivalent? And the answer is that x would have to be equal to 3. This next problem is a little trickier because we're going to have to deal with some negative exponents. Recall that negative exponents, for example, if I say 2 over 1, which is 2, to the negative 1 power, it does not create a negative value. Negative exponents will flip your fraction. So this would become 1 over 2 to the positive first power. So your exponent will change from negative to positive and vice versa, and your fraction must flip. So when we take a look at part C, I have a fraction of 1 third. 1 third is equivalent to 3 over 1 to the negative 1 power. So that's what we want to do here. Okay, so 3 over 1 is the flipped fraction make your exponent negative. And this is going to be equivalent to 9, and we know that 9 can be written with a base of 3 as well. It would be 3 squared. So now that our bases are the same here, this problem is not so ugly. We do want to do our power to a power first here, where we multiply them together. That's going to give us 3 to the negative 1x equals 3 to the second power, and if it's not so clear to see what your x should be, make a brand new equation for yourself. For example, I would just do negative x equals 2 and solve for x. In this case, I would multiply both sides by a negative 1 and end up with x being equal to negative 2. And of course, for any of these problems, you can always plug these back into your calculator and double check to see if they do in fact work. Our part D here will require the use of a logarithm, even though it's written exponentially. There's nothing similar about either side here. So one way to get rid of an exponential function is to take the logarithm of it. Since they're inverses, they should cancel. So if I see a base E here, that means I'm dealing with natural logarithms, the ln. So I'm going to take the ln of both sides of my equation, just like so, and what that will allow me to do is to cancel the ln and the e. That's always true. ln and e will always cancel. So my equation now becomes x equals the ln of 7. And you can leave your answer just like that, since the ln of 7 is equivalent to an actual value. So those are our first four problems. Let's look at just a couple more. So for part C e here, we have the ln of x equals negative 3. And again, since nothing looks similar here, there's no common base, there's no logarithm on both sides, we're going to bring in the inverse of ln, which is e. And in this case, we're going to raise each side as an exponent of e. That will also cancel out e and ln. Watch what I do. So I'm going to do e to the ln of x equals e to the negative cube. 
This is also one of our properties of logarithms, which is really helpful in this case. So the E and the LN, again, they completely cancel out. And all I'm left with is X equals E to the negative cube. And since E to the negative cube, or the negative third power, is an actual number, we can leave our answer just as it is. Please recall, negative exponents do not make negative numbers, they make fractions. Our next problem is log of x equals negative 1, and this looks just like part e, except we have common logs. So we're not going to do um, exponents of a base e, we're going to do exponents of base 10. That's going to cancel out the log. So I'm going to do 10 to the log of x equals 10 to the negative first power. And just like ln and e, 10 and log cancel each other out. So in this case, I'm left with x equals 10 to the negative first power, which, it, since this is so simple, this is the equivalent to 1 over 10 to the positive first power, or just 10. So those are some very basic problems. We're going to step it up just a little bit and see some more complex situations. So here we go. We're going to solve for x for both of these equations. In part a, we have e to the negative x squared equals e to the negative 3x minus 4. What we want to make sure of first is if you see common bases, you just have to worry about the exponents. So this problem, we can go straight into their exponents, which is going to be negative x squared, and I want that to be equal to negative 3x minus 4. This is the only equation I really have to solve in this case since my bases are the same. So how do I solve this? Well, I see a quadratic term, a linear term, and a constant, which sounds like factoring. So to do that, we're going to add the x squared here to both sides. So I get it set equal to 0, which is going to look like 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. And then we're just going to simply factor this. So this becomes x and x, and I need factors of 4 that yield a negative 3, and it sounds like it's going to be negative 4 and positive 1. And then to solve these out finally, we're going to set each of these equal to 0 and solve. So x minus 4 equals 0. When x is equal to 4, there's one solution and x plus 1 equals 0 when x is equivalent to negative 1. So that's how we do part A. This is when your bases are the same. In part B, we have 3 times 2 to the x equals 42. Do not multiply these two numbers together. That's going to give you something that's not algebraically correct. Um, it's it's a PEMDAS issue, it's just not good algebra. The way to get rid of that 3 is not by multiplication, but by dividing it by both sides. That will cancel it out here, and then I just have to divide 42 by 3. So 42 divided by 3 is 13. Nope, it's not, it's 14. Sorry about that. Okay. So what we're going to do next is see if I can make common bases. Unfortunately, 2 to some power, we'll call it maybe 3 or 4 or 5, will not give us a 14. So we can't just use our exponents in this case. We have to use some logarithms. So to, to decide which logarithm to use, the only time we're going to use ln is if there's an e and I don't see one. So what we're going to do is take the log of both sides. So log 2 to the x equals log 14. And remember that our goal is to get x by itself. Now when I take the log of both sides and x is in my exponent, I can use my power property and bring my exponent down in front of log as a coefficient. So this is going to give me x times the log of 2 equals the log of 14. And from here, the only thing I need to do is to divide both sides by the log of 2. And then x is finally by itself. 
And I will caution you with one thing. When you guys put this in your calculators, okay, because this is definitely a calculated problem, you need to do log 14 and then close it, okay, and then do your division by log of 2. If you do this instead, log 14 divided by 2 like that, that's not the same thing. This is the log of 14 divided by the log of 2, so just be cautioned with that. So I put this in my calculator correctly and I get about 3.807 to three decimal places. Okay, so we're going to take a look at just a couple more problems and then we'll finish up. Okay, so here's a good one. This is example two. We're going to solve for t this time. So just to forewarn you, we don't want to do anything to this part until this two and this four are moved over to the other side because I can't do logarithms until my base with its exponent is completely isolated on one side of my equation. So the first thing that we're going to do before we divide is we're going to go ahead and add this 4 to both sides. So this cancels out and I'm left with 2 times 3 to the 2t minus 5 equals 15. Now from here, we're going to divide by this 2. Remember to not multiply it by that 3. That's completely wrong. Um, these will cancel, and now I have 3 to the 2t minus 5, and 15 divided by 2 is 7 and a half. So, again, is it possible to get these bases to be the same number? Absolutely not. We've got a decimal here. Not going to work. So we have to decide if we're going to take the log or natural log of both sides. I don't see e anywhere, so we're going to do the log of both sides. So log of 3 to the 2t minus 5 equals log of 7.5. And now from here, we're going to use our power property. I'm going to take my exponent and bring it down as a coefficient. In this case, you want to be really careful because I have more than one term that's being brought down. So let's make sure to use some parentheses just to make sure our order of operations ends up being correct. So 2t minus 5, like this, times the log of 3. And this is equal to the log of 7.5. Almost out of space there. Okay, next thing to do is I see this 2t minus 5 being multiplied by that log of 3. So we're going to divide both sides by the log of 3. And I'm going to do one big bar here, log of 3. That simplifies things a lot. Those will cancel. My next side is going to look like 2t minus 5 equals the log of 7.5 divided by the log of 3. And now we just have to worry about getting t by itself. Okay, this is a much simpler process, and actually if you want to at this point in time, you can go ahead and do this division and get yourself a three decimal digit. That might actually make this process a lot cleaner. Um, please feel free to do that if you'd like to. Um, I'm going to do it without it. I am going to go ahead and add the 5. When you add the 5, it just gets added out to the side at the end. So this is 2t equals log 7.5 divided by log of 3 plus 5 out here at the end. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by a 2. So this gets divided by 2 and this entire thing here gets divided by 2. Um, I may leave that till the very, very end. Okay, so what we can do here is this is t equals um, and if it also helps, if you're dividing a whole big mess like this by a number, it may be more helpful to multiply it by its reciprocal. In other words, if I'm dividing by 2, I could multiply everything by a 1 half. For instance, I could say this is 1 half times all this business, 7.5 divided by log of 3 plus 5. So we're going to go ahead and very carefully enter all of this in our calculators. And please give this a try so that you can see if you're doing your um, calculations correctly with your calculator. But your answer should be about 3.417, just like that. Okay. 
We have one more problem left and then we'll be done. All right, here we go. Solving for x. We have the log base 3 of 5x minus 1 equals the log base 3 of x plus 7. First thing you got to check is you have to make sure your bases are the same, which 3 and 3, they match, so we can move ahead. All right, so the only thing that we need to worry about in this case is the parts that are different. Since this log base 3 matches this log base 3, the only part I need to worry about to be equivalent is this part and this part. So these together will create their own separate equation. This is going to be 5x minus 1 equals x plus 7. And this is very simple to solve. We add 1 to both sides. And I have 5x equals x plus 8. Subtract x from both sides. I have 4x equals 8. Divide by 4. And this gives me x is equal to 2. And I'm going to show you why this works. If we went ahead and plugged this back in up here, plug in 2 to both sides, I'd get log base 3. So let's see, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. And when I plug it into the right-hand side, I get log base 3 of 2 plus 7, which is also 9. So that's what gives me equivalent statements. And that's going to wrap it up. That will complete this tutorial.